You're listening to Daycare Overhaul, doing childcare better, presented by Childcare BizHelp. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome to Daycare Overhaul, where we do childcare better. We do childcare better. We do. <laughs> We're going to tell you why. We're not just saying that to just say it. We do have some reasons. Right. We did take a lot of time to actually name our podcast, and there was a lot of thought behind it, but we're really excited today to bring you our first episode. Numero uno. Numero uno. And we really do want to emphasize that when we talk about overhauling daycare, we're going to talk about really doing your child care better. And the good thing is, is a lot of our our little strategies or whatever are going to be things that we've actually either done ourselves in our career in child care or people that we know have or our clients and that sort of thing. So it's it's been tested. And so it's not just something that we created out of the out of the air. Right. It is proven and tested. That's what I was looking for. I'm glad you knew. I'm like, what is that word? I can't think of it. <laughs> well, maybe we should introduce ourselves. We should. We could keep talking or or introduce ourselves. All right. Well, let's, I'll start. You start. All right. And then I'll introduce you. Okay. All right. Well, I'm Caroline Jens, in case you don't know who I am. And I'm the founder of Childcare Biz Help. And this is Justina Patterson. I always like to introduce her as our chief marketing officer, but... My favorite thing for you is our recent appointed title to you, Dragon Slayer. That's true. My well, coffee mug says so, so it's got to be true. True. If you haven't um, found out or heard why Justina is a Dragon Slayer, I'm sure you're going to find out on one of our future podcasts. Time will tell. Maybe today. I don't know. We'll see where today goes. It is our first episode. So. There's no rules here. <laughs> I heard there's no rules when you do a podcast, so we'll find out how that goes. But what we really want to get across today is, you know, why keep coming back and watching us? You know, why? Or listening. Listening. For those of you who are listening, you can listen, but you can also find us on YouTube right. watching us. Like as today, it's happening. you could see how tan I am and how white Justina is today. Rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Jamaican glow because just got back from Jamaica. I won't rub that in anymore. But um, but anyways, for those of you that are those awkward, I'm not talking about it anymore. <laughs> uh, for those of you who um, may not know, we are filming this, so you will be able to watch us and you will be able to listen to us if you want. But what we really want to get across are giving you some really great um, strategies to use in your child care center, like we mentioned. And today we want to just set the foundation of, you know, what our background is, how we got together, um, why we started this podcast, and then we're going to end today with something really cool. I'm excited. Let's get started. All right, let's get started. So, ooh, let's transition into our first topic. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Dun, page da, 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 flip. Da, page flip. Notes, they're notes. We have oh, to make sure we, we talk, get all of our talking points. Right. Well, let's let's talk about how we know each other. Or actually, let's step back. I'll start talking a little bit about my background and okay. how I got into child care because it's a little goofy. And then I'll turn it over to you because your background and how you got into child care is probably just as goofy as mine. That This is where the, the laughter comes in. This is where the laughter comes in. Because it's goofy, right? Okay, right. you go. All right, I'm going to go. So my background is not early education. Um, I actually started off as a banker in a bank. It was boring. I wore suits every day and I wore heels every day. Um, I was one of those finance geeks. And um, I did that for almost 20 years. And it just random. My husband joined the Army. I ended up switching careers. And on our way back here to Wisconsin – which is where we're from, if you can't tell our accents. Um, <laughs> I found myself working for a company that had a child care center. And so I was the executive director for nearly seven years, and I helped this child care center. It was a multi -lo – well, at the time, it was just one location. And so that center started to really thrive, and um, we took that center from one location to two, built a brand-new building – um, really built a really exciting place. And 
um, that is really where I fell in love with childcare, which I never knew was in my future. And that's the cool thing. So now today, um, three years later, I had started Child Care Biz Help. And now I work with child care centers all over the United States. And what's really cool is I met Justina in my journey of child care. So I'll let Justina tell a little bit about her st- her story. So I have a degree in multimedia digital arts and I graduated and I couldn't find a job, which I think is pretty, pretty common now. I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely it's, common. It's, it's hard to find jobs. This was way back in the day. It was a long time ago. Um, and my my sister, I think she had worked at a center and I had visited at one point in time. And I was like, I think I could do this. And so little did you know how crazy it would be. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, so I started in in a classroom as a teacher, you know, and I got my my certifications through um, what the state of Wisconsin requires and that sort of thing. And in my first center I was at, I was a four year old teacher. And that was an experience. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, we won't go into details, but it was quite the experience. And I wait—I did watch you in action in that classroom. No, this was this was before I knew oh, you. This was before. This was before I knew you. So that was that's a different story for a different day. <laughs> and and then I ended up going to um, a center that was brand new, and I was hired as the the like the school age teacher. Well, okay. a new center. We didn't have any school agers. So you sat in a room all by yourself all day? I did not. I, you know, I started in and the toddler room at the time needed help. And I was like, yeah, sure, I can go in there and help help them. No problem. And I totally fell in love with yeah. the toddlers and with child care and spent the next five years in a toddler room. That's yeah. where I met you. Yes. I was a toddler teacher. Well, I was a toddler teacher in the school year. And then in the summer, I was a summer camp teacher for a couple years until that didn't really work out. It's not good for toddlers to change your schedule. And so then I just stayed in the in the toddler room for five years. Wow. Until the day. Until the day. And we're going to get into that right now. <clears throat> so fun fact. So Justina happened to be a teacher at this center that I was executive director for. And that's how we met. And I remember seeing her in a classroom. You know, I only visited the center maybe once a week if I was Yeah, at the time, you know, when you first started, it wasn't as often as it got to be. Right, right. Then I became a plague and I was there all the time. No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) well. (laughs) But anyway, so I, I did know Justina was an amazing toddler teacher. And one day in particular, when I came to the office for our weekly meeting, to meet with our leadership team. Um, you know, it's, you know, cr- life at a center is crazy. You hope that you're going to go into these meetings and you're going to be able to just knock out your topics. And <laughs> That's yeah, funny. and oftentimes, you know, you hope to mark things, take things off your to-do list. Four hours later, you're still there. <laughs> four hours later, you're still in a meeting. You've added like 4,000 things to your to-do list. Well, anyways, I was trying to have a really good attitude that day. I saw Justina come into the office, and she happened to have some baby invites or wedding shower invites. Something. I can't remember. And come to find out that she made these beautiful invites. And that's something that you were, you really like to do. It was something that you did on the side. Right. You know, and for me, it was, I loved doing that. And when I couldn't find a job and end up in childcare, I fell in love with childcare. So for me, it was like, well, I can just do that kind of design stuff on the side of her friends or whatever, and it'll be fine. Right. Well, I knew there was more to her story than she did. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this gal is super talented. She needs to be doing more. Because what you didn't know at the time is that we were going to build a second location. Correct. And I knew that we needed a marketing person that was going to be able to help us get there. And so I asked Justina the next day to meet me in the one secret space that we had at our center. I don't know if I would call it secret, but it was the the one place that we could lock ourselves into without people knowing we were in there. Right. So for you childcare centers that are in those similar situations where you don't really have that that place that you can have like really confidential conversations, use your laundry room 
tip number one today. <laughs> or if you don't have a laundry room, maybe a large closet right. that isn't overflowing with toys or something. Or maybe you lock yourself in your car. I don't know. <laughs> well, you could, if that's the case, just go out to lunch. Just go out to lunch. True. <laughs> I don't, I didn't take you to lunch. That's what we should have done. <sighs> But anyways, I had Justina bring a whole portfolio of things that she did um, that were artistic and, and creative. And I was just pulling out one thing after the other of just amazing work that she did. And so I went back and I was I told the owner. Wait, wait, I have to interrupt because okay. you forgot the best part. Someone <sighs> knocked on the door. And we're like, what do we do? <laughs> like, we they can't know that we're in here together because... They might think I'm firing her. Well, or something. Who knows? Like, because you know, it's all of a sudden everybody in the center will know that something's happening in the laundry room. So I think you actually went to the door and just was like, "I'm having a meeting in here," and just shut it. And I just like stood back so no one could see me. It's always that gossip, like when the executive director comes in and has a, a meeting with someone, and then all of a sudden you never see them again. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not a good story. That will not be a strategy that we talk about today. <laughs> but moving along, yeah, moving along as. As I mentioned, so I, I got back to the office and I talked to the owner and I was like, we need to we need to promote this gal. She's so talented and she's the perfect person to help us market our brand new child care center. So next thing you know, Justina gets a phone call from me with an opportunity. And I also want to say when we were having our secret meeting, <laughs> I think at one point time you looked at me and you go, this could be really big. Are you ready? And I just, I think I just went, yep. Because <laughs> I didn't know if I was, but I knew I would figure it out. Right. But I knew you were ready. Thank you. I knew she was ready. And I was right. Because, you know, not only, <clears throat> not only did you help us fill to capacity, like over capacity, our child care center, the existing one that we had. Correct. You put a marketing plan in place. You got our center full within four months. When that brand new center opened. And yep. you, yeah. <laughs> and we had to unpack everything for the new building. We had a box after box after box. Yep. <laughs> Every day something else was coming to the center. And at one point in time, the entrance area was just stocked full of box, boxes. And we're like, this is a lot. Right. But it for, was an experience. Right. So for any of you um, child care professionals out there that have opened up a brand new child care center, you know what we're talking about. Because there's a lot of work involved with that. And so not only did Justina wear that marketing hat, mm -hmm. but you basically did whatever. You got into the classroom. You went to the store to get groceries, mm -hmm. like what unpacked boxes, whatever needed to be done. So um, the day came where I left because I wanted to start my own business, Child Care Biz Help. And it was a sad day. It was a sad day. It was a very sad day. We knew something was up when you walked in. We're like... What's happening? The door closed. And the, the, now, we're, now by this time, this was our second location and I had moved over there. Right. But the door closed and we got kind of all looked at each other like, this isn't good. Right. And I had to give the news that I was going to be venturing off on my own. But deep down in my heart, I knew that um, Justina and I would be working together again someday. Yeah. So <laughs> fast forward. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? How long? A year and a half? Yeah, Two-ish years? I made the decision to leave where I was at and kind of figure out a new plan with my life. And it just so happened that by some crazy turn of events, like the stars aligned. The stars aligned. Like any sort of weird kind of like, I don't know, I had a lucky horseshoe or something. I mean, I didn't, but whatever worked out. <laughs> <laughs> you had a dragon in your pocket. <laughs> I, I had a dragon and we we figured out a way to, to yeah. you know, work together again. And thus I joined you at Child Care Biz Help. Right. So now it's been... Almost two years. Almost two years. Gosh. So Justina and I now, what we just have the best job ever. <laughs> we get to work with child care centers. Right now we're working with centers in the United States. Um, doing pretty much, it's called another use. So we do anything that they need. Literally. Literally. Like you've painted walls. We've painted walls, correct. We've installed signage. Yeah, you you installed signage. We, yeah. You designed the signage and installed the signage. Yeah. yeah. Before, and before nap time. It, correct. So, yes. you know, no, no babies, in, nap interruptions were interrupted that day because they shared a wall. But... I mean, literally anything that they need help with, we'll do. Right. So 
what, you know, why we wanted to introduce ourselves and kind of explain what our background is, is so that you'll understand as future podcasts come about, we are exposed to a lot of different strategies. And we've lived a lot of the pain points that centers struggle with, you know, whether it be hiring crises or all of a sudden you have 40 kids that need to start in two weeks and you're like, where are we going to put them? Because that happened to us. and <laughs> That has happened. You, you know, like all those crazy situations that happen, you're like, we, we've been there, we lived it, we've lived to tell about it. We have lived to we've tell about it. We've laughed through it. And, you the know, hiring crisis, the flood, we've gone through a lot of those. And so, you know, not only are we exposed to a lot with, with our Another You clients, but we've lived through a lot ourselves in, in our journey at, at the center that we were at. Right. So, you know, what we want to really get across with with this podcast, which actually, you know, daycare overhaul is is a bucket list of mine, a bucket list item. Um, it's been something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. And we just happen to, again, it stars align. Now is a perfect time. We feel like we've got a bunch of value that we can bring our listeners. And not only do we have Justina's experience, um, my over six years of running a center, and then the nearly four years as a consultant, um, and then writing books, et cetera, you know, we really feel like we have some amazing things that we can bring our audience, right? Yep. Great. So we're going to use this platform to share stories and strategies with you on how to do childcare better. And so each podcast is going to be a little different. Sometimes you're going to see Justina and I. Or here. Or here. <laughs> see and here. I got to remember that. Sometimes we'll have visual aids, but then you, if, for those that are just listening, we'll have to explain them. It's going to be tricky. We, we've got it. We've got it. But we also have some really cool guests that are going to be coming down the pipeline. I'm excited. Some of our clients, some are not our clients. Um, just really cool stuff. I'm, I think we've got a really great, um, list of topics that we've got planned already. We're, I think we've got plans for the first quarter already lined up. Yep. We've got guests coming. So, um, you're going to want to continue to tune in because our desire again is really for you to not only walk away um, with things that you're going to be able to just implement in your child care center today, but have fun and laugh. And know that I think sometimes being an owner or director in child care centers can be really lonely. It is super lonely. You can't lonely. go home to your spouse or significant other and explain to them what happened and have them get it. Because until right. you live it, you don't understand. And so just know that there's people out there that have had the struggles that you have and it's okay and to just, you know, have that moment to take and be like, you know what? I'm not alone. This is, I, I'm going to look back on this and laugh about it because it's funny now, even though it might not be funny in the moment. Exactly. And, you know, we really, we work a lot to try to motivate each other and we we do a lot of learning in that area. And so we hope to bring that to you in in these conversations that we have too. So let's have fun. Let's learn. Let's laugh. And today, as we kind of wrap up our podcast, we're going to be talking about our really great overhaul win that we're going to share with you. I'm excited about that. So there's some really good stuff that we're going to share. So let's flip the page. Next page of <laughs> notes. Next page of notes. All right. So everyone, I want before, you- Before we start, oh. I'm going to take a drink of water. All I've right. been doing that intermittently, but I wanted to do another one. All right. Thank you, Mandy, for the wonderful mugs. If you want a mug like this, let us know. Is this called product placement? I mean, it's a picture of myself, so I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know the rules on that. So we're selling Justina, <laughs> Justina's product today. And and Caroline's. Again, if you're listening to this, you're not gonna know it'll what we're make no about. sense to you. But uh, anyways, if for those that are just listening, we have bitmojis. If you know who childcare biz help is, you'll see us. We you know, we're going to get into our core values. And one of them is having fun. And so our Bitmojis is a way for us to kind of express that creative side of ourselves. And who doesn't like a good Bitmoji doing something crazy? Right, right. So we thought we'd put them on our, our mugs. And so that's that's where we're at. But so what I want you to do right now is, um, you know, if you're able to get out a piece of paper, or get out a pen, um, something that you can write on, the notes on your phone, wherever, if you're working out and, you know, listen to daycare overhaul while you work out. 
you know, we'd love to hear you that you're doing that. Um, but what we wanted to start with, we thought a really great strategy would be core values because core values are the foundation of a company. There's no better way to start a podcast than setting the foundation. And by doing that is talking about our core values. So that was a really good segue. <laughs> But I'm bummed. I'll be here all day. <laughs> You're so good at what you do. But what's funny, this is the funny part of core values. We tell all of our clients that they need to have core values, but firm believers in it. And it's not just in child gear. Any business that right. you see out there has core values. Right. And we tell them not just to have core values, but you have to live those core values. Yep. You have to bang that drum for your staff. You know, you have to let your customers know what your core values are. And also, I found out two years into childcare biz help, we didn't have any core values. I, I'm pretty sure the conversation went something like this. We are trying to make a change to our website and we are going over some, some verbiage. And I was like, what are our core values? Why don't we have any? And I think you were like, oh. We should probably do that. Okay. And so we we ironed out, I think, a few right then and there. Right. Oh, I got to give some background. I got to justify why that was. <laughs> I don't want to put myself out there like, hey, well, this gal does not know how to run a business. Um, so when I did start Child Care Biz Help, I didn't, I planned on it just being me. Right. And so I didn't need any core values for me to run. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I, I didn't expect to grow our company the way that we, we, we've grown it. And, um, yeah. So all of a sudden I was like, whoa, we don't have any core values. We don't have a foundation as to the principles and how we treat our customers and how we treat each other. Mm -hmm. And so it was just perfect timing. Um, so we, we got together and as a team and started strategizing. And so at the time it was just Justina, Justina and I. And we came up with some really great core values. Yeah, we liked them. And I think that um, they were really great for where we were when we created them. They were. Right. And and I'm going to read off my paper just a little bit, even though our producer tells me not to. But I want to make sure I don't get this See wrong. See again? No, <laughs> no rules. No rules. Um, I was reading about core values and why they're so important. And um, I just want to reiterate three things. And... Core values are really the beacon for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we bang that drum about knowing the why behind everything that you do. And so first and foremost, your core values are the why you do what you do. And so that's the beacon for everything. The second reason you have core values is for loyalty. It's to attract. Mm -hmm. And so if people know what your values are, whether they're uh, a prospective employee or a prospective family, they have something that they can be attracted to. Right. You know, it says, you know, my mission aligns with your mission. Right. And so when you don't have core values out there that people can say, hey, do, you know, do I align with? with or, or what is this company about? Right. What is this company about? If you don't have that, um, you might not get the right fit. Right. And there's nothing better t than hiring the right fit for an employee. Especially an employee. Especially an employee. And then third, it makes communication and honestly marketing easier. Mm -hmm. um, you, when you know your values and you can, you can create blogs from them, you can create marketing materials from them, and we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can really direct your content and your story based on those found the, the foundation of core values. Right, right. So, um, so yeah, so as like I mentioned earlier, we we tell our clients all the time, you know, have core values, but don't just have them. Live them, breathe them, believe in them. Believe in them. And I think I'm gonna write that down. When when you as the owner or director believe in your core values, you get you get buy-in from your staff. And from your family, because if you don't believe in them, they're going to have a hard time b buying into the idea of these are the core values and this is why we're doing what we're doing. Right. And um, so some of the ways that we tell our clients, you know, to kind of live those core values are, you know, use your staff meetings. 
as an opportunity to, um, you know, start off every staff meeting or do a team building activity that revolve around your core values. Even just one, picking one to focus on maybe each month. Right. And doing something different to that kind of aligns with that core value. Right. Because think about this. As you hire brand new employees, you're hiring them on at different times. So if you only if you only talk about your core values at, you know, maybe your, your January staff meeting because yeah. it's a new year, right? like once or twice a year, you're missing out on all those other employees. Right. So, yeah. So, so your staff meetings are a really great way to introduce your core values, um, job descriptions and reviews. We absolutely believe that core values should be a part of the review process and not to be, not to necessarily, excuse me, not to necessarily say what people are doing incorrectly, but this is how you, we saw you living this core value. You know, like taking that note, you know, if one of your core values is, I don't having know, having fun, having fun and you happened to walk by the break room and there was two teachers in there laughing and having a great time, make note of it. And then at the review time, be like, I really liked how you live this core value and you did so by doing this. Right. Because not only does it show that the core value is important to you, but it also shows that you care about that employee and you took notice of something that they did. Right. Because, you know, we don't always want to um, reprimand our employees. Right. You know, let's find different ways that we can show praise and recognition um, for our employees and and celebrate those wins. So like you said. If you see someone living a core value, you know, if you can't, if you don't even want to wait to their review period, you know, recognize them in a staff meeting. Right. You know, recognize them with a personal handwritten note or a little gift or whatever, but let them know that you see what they're doing and that you appreciate it. I mean, and I think that we could sit and talk about praise and that sort of thing all day, but that can be another podcast for another time and we can focus on praise and recognition. Well, I think I have a guest for that one. I'm excited. (laughs) I talked to him this morning, and I think he's going to be perfect for that. Um, Another thing that you can do when you're trying to, you know, get your employees excited about your core values is do fun little videos. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways that you can, you know, uh, just pull out your phone and do a little recording of, you know, one or two of your core values. Video is so important. Um, Another little tidbit people will believe what they see in a video like their best friend told them something mm. especially if you're coming across genuine and authentic they're gonna be like they're gonna believe you because they're seeing you say it and they're gonna see it with passion right so even if you can just take a little 10 15 second clip of something right it's it brings the authenticity up even more yeah and you bring up a good point we had a client that Um, had really specific core values, and she went and asked her her families for testimonials. But she asked for specifically as it relates to certain core values. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, that was a really good idea. So she had a library of of videos from her families that talked about one core value from each family. And so that was just a really cool way to use video and to get that credibility behind it um, from her families. So that's just a cool way to use core values, too. Um, and creating an incentive program around those core values. Hey, we have to do that yet here at Child Care Biz Help. Can one of the incentives be like a trip? A trip to Jamaica? I mean, you said it, so why not? I was just going to be like, maybe to like lunch. But you oh. said Jamaica, so <laughs> like write that down. You heard it here. We need a lot more clients. So for those of you listening out on our podcast or watching. (laughs) All right. Anyways, our producer is looking at me getting mad. So um, anyways, I'll move on. Moving (laughs) along. There's no rules here. There are no rules here. Anyways. um, So Justina, our marketing guru. I want to know how do you help our clients show their core values? I think... There's a, first of all, the options are endless. Um, some of my favorite things are, I always, always think that you should have brochures for your center. A nice, colorful brochure that has a lot of great information. And some of that information can be your core values. That's like first one. So that if they, they happen to grab a brochure, maybe you have some at your local chamber of commerce. Again, another topic for another time. Right. They can pull it out and they can kind of get an overview of what you offer at your center, but also your beliefs, which are your core values. Um, A tour packet. 
tour packets. Love them. When someone comes and tours your center, they should always have something to take home so they can remember it, make notes, that sort of thing. Showcase them in your tour packet. We, um, I always like to see people um, put them, some sort of flyer together and put them in all the classrooms Mm. so that the teachers can see them all the times and the parents can. So it really shows that you don't just have these core values to have them. Like it's, it's everywhere. Right. Uh, you're a vestibule or an entrance or some sort of when you walk into your center is a great place to display core values, whether it be a picture, a poster with some language. I mean, options are really endless there, whatever kind of goes with um, right. your aesthetic at your center. Don't forget your website, right? <clears throat> well, I was going to get there. Oh. <laughs> uh, website, obviously, they should always be on there. Um I like to see them on on the homepage, but really, as long as they're somewhere on there that it's easily accessible for people to get at, they right. shouldn't have to search for them, right? Um, and and maybe then on your website, that's where you can expand on them a little bit more. It'll give you some really good SEO juice and search engine optimization. Oh yes, again another topic for another, another time. topic for another day. Um, so that it's you know it's ingrained everywhere, right? Everywhere you go. Anywhere that uh, either a prospective family or parent come, prospective family or parent, that's the same thing, <laughs> <laughs> a prospective family or prospective employee, no matter how they see you, they know that that's your core value. You know, on your social, whatever social you use, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, again, LinkedIn, we're from another, another we're, episode. we're big LinkedIn believers, um, Twitter, if that's what you use. It should be there somewhere so someone knows. So even if it's just a picture with a word, mm-hmm. so they can attribute that, you know, the people say it takes seven to 14 touches. And I, and I say the word touches with quotation marks for someone to make a decision. Essentially, that means interactions with you. It might not be a physical contact or a, an email or a phone call. It might just be them calling you and then seeing seeing your Facebook and checking out your Instagram and doing this, that, and the other thing. And then more, the more and more they see it, they're like, oh, that's right. Or mm-hmm. if they forget about it, like how many times does the parent call and they get busy and then they forget. And like three months later, they're like, oh, hey, remember me? Right. I've been seeing your stuff everywhere. And you're like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Good. <laughs> or they've been hearing your voice on radio. <laughs> Again. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> um, we yes, the radio ads. Great, great marketing idea. Uh, but Essentially, no matter how they're coming at you, they're seeing that this is like your foundation of your center. Right. Or of your business or whatever it may be. And they know that you believe them and you make decisions based on them and everything. And I think that a lot of parents and and prospective employees, they'll respect that and they'll be like, I know that they care. Right. Right. There's one thing um, when you're putting things down on paper, but when you're actually following through on them, right. that's, that's where it takes your business to that whole next level. And so fun fact is, you know, we, we had core values. You we know, once we, once we didn't, then we had core values. And then we went to a conference. Just, I mean, it was a small conference. It was a small conference. Just like 6,500 of our closest friends. Who was that? I mean, you probably might not have heard of them, but her name's Rachel Hollis. That's true. We did go to Rachel Hollis. It was her business conference, and I think it's safe to say that it, it like it literally changed our. It changed my life, right? It changed my life too, and it changed our the trajectory of our business. And I really feel that you know our word this year is is level up. Okay, right. and we got that from this conference, and but we walked away realizing that. Our core values really didn't define us enough. No, they were more just statements. Right. And not that that's bad. I mean, statements are fine, but I think words or statements, they need to have something to go along with them, like a description and what that core value means to you and how you plan to live it out, essentially. Right. So we're going to share with you our revised core values that we're really excited about. I'm going to read them because... They're fantastic. Obviously, we think so. And I don't want to miss a word. All right. Water so, water break for a water second. Water break. All right. Water break. Mm, that's good water. 
<laughs> it reminded me in that that movie, The Water Boy. That's some high quality H two O. Some high quality H two O we got going on here. <laughs> okay. Okay, that was moving, our moment of laughter. Moving along. Okay. I'm gonna. So what? Let, let's do this. I'll okay. read it, and then you, if you want to expand on why we chose that, and we can kind of just talk about it. Sounds good. Do or do not. There is no try. Just like Yoda commands, we anticipate and believe we are unstoppable. We fail forward, so we never regret not doing what we feel is right, is the right move right now. We believe that you can achieve anything if you are focused, hardworking, and have a roadmap. So any Star Wars fans out there or Mandalorian I've never lovers? seen either. <gasps> oh. I mean, I know who Yoda is, and I know what the Mandalorian is. But- Do you know who Baby Yoda is? Yes. Okay, Baby Yoda's the greatest. Well, anyways, that's where this core value specifically came from, because um, it's just a part of my family. And this is a family business, and we, we're big Star Wars fans, and yeah, that makes us geeks or whatever. But do or do not, do or do not. Basically, what that means is I'm not going to try to do something. Right. I'm going to be intentional. I'm going to believe that I can do it. You know, and that's the philosophy that we want to have in this company is that, you know, if we if we're hardworking enough, if we're focused enough, if we put a a, a map in place, mm-hmm. we really can do anything. Right, and and I think this is really good because it's good to know, and it's okay to fail as long as you fail forward. Like you fail, you learn from it, and you do it again. Right. Well, you learn and learn and learn, and I I failed plenty of times. And we stumbled at the beginning of this podcast, but I believe that as we continue to grow and we continue to have more episodes, you know, we're we're failing forward. We're going right. to have a good time. We're going to enjoy it. And we just have to, our company believes that no matter what you do, if you're hardworking and you, and you try, and you don't just try. You do. You do it because you're clear about where you want to go. And that's where this core value comes And I from. think sometimes, and this kind of correlates with that is if you wait until you are 100% ready and you have all the tools necessary and you have, you'll never get started. Never. Because there'll be always something that you're like, well, we're not ready yet. Right. Just do it. And it's like, no better, do better. So you do something, you learn from it, and you do better the next time. When I, when I started Child Care Biz Help, you know, fear was a big piece of, you know, not starting your own business. Um, And I, and I commend Every one of you that are out there that took that chance and started a child care center. And, you know, that's about not, you know, not, you're not ever going to be perfect to the point where you feel like, okay, now I'm 100% ready. Like you said, right. you just have to dive in. Right. Well, and it's funny you say dive because that was <laughs> your word last year. That was. I get stuck on these words. But Baby Yoda, what should we say about Baby Yoda? I can say nothing because I have never seen oh the show. Oh my gosh! I need to have someone on the show that can talk Baby Yoda with me. You made a cookie that was designed like Baby Yoda. I know what he looks like. All right, Moving, onward. You know <laughs> that creativity totally parlays into the next. Did you plan that? I did not. This is just flowing you too just perfectly. Said, <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, the next core value is intentionally creative. We are idea generators and creative thinkers. It's important to us to provide the people we work with custom and personable solutions. We expose clarity through the mess of ingenuity. Throw another idea our way. Throw another idea our way. Wow. That was a mouthful. So for those of you probably don't know this, in addition to um, Justina being a dragon slayer, she's also a unicorn. Okay. And I believe that child care biz help is why is where we're at today because of this unicorn. And what makes her a unicorn is her ability to be like uber create creative. And so with with our company, it was really important with this core value that people understood that not only are we creative, but we will create things specifically for you, Mm -hmm. custom personable. Right. And we're not just going to give you a template like everyone else's template. We may start from a template at times. Right. But we're going to make sure that we're being creative, that we're going to be custom, that we're, that's part of what we love to do. Right. Well, and I think that you need to give yourself a little bit of credit 
too, because you're also super creative. So sometimes when I do not have the creativeness flowing in my brain, <laughs> I'll do something to start somewhere. And then I usually send it to you and you're like, well, not really what I had in mind. <laughs> And so then, you know, we work together and we fix it and it's, you know. Right. Well, and that's what makes us a really great team. Right. And we both have kind of, we both will think on on both sides of our brain, I think, sometimes. And we're kind of like that yin and yang. And then when one is down, the other one's up and right. there to help each other out. But we are firm believers of throw another idea our way. We're like all for that. We love, love hearing new ideas, especially in this industry. Right. And then it gets dangerous because they're like, well, from that idea, we could do X, Y, and Z. And from those, we could probably do A, B, and C. And so that is one of our weaknesses, is that we can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. <laughs> On that note, because we get sidetracked. All right, I'll quit that. You are family. Whether you work for us or with us, welcome to the family. Family celebrates together, supports, and uplifts each other, and never takes advantage. We impact each other in a way that understands the ripple effect of our actions. We know every family has a little bit of crazy, and we are no exception. You'll feel you'll feel at home here. So this one I love. I love it too. And why I love it is because after Child Care Biz Help started and we started having our first clients, everyone said what makes us different is that they feel like family. Right. And I really take that to heart because – People that have been clients with us and are no longer clients because they've been given the tools that they need, they are still part of our family. Right. They will always be a part of our family. Right. And we make sure to we make sure to have experiences that we create for them so that they know that they're part of our family. Right. And um, we want to make sure that everyone in our company realizes that you know, we've got a lot of personal issues that we all bring to the table, um, but we're here for each other through that. Um, we're here for our clients. Um, we also know that we're a bit crazy. There's well, in and, everyone. And I'm not saying the crazy is bad. Right. Good crazy. Every family has a little bit of crazy, right? right. I mean, we could have used the word quirky if we would have so choose, but crazy is way better. Right. But bottom line is we want you to feel, we want you to feel at home. We want our employees to feel at home and we want our clients to feel at home. Right. Next. Better than yesterday. Yesterday. Oops, sorry. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Not the singer in the family. <laughs> Again, better than yesterday. We strive to raise the bar every day. We are growth minded. We believe that our only competition is who we were yesterday. We work hard, like really, really hard. We believe in being present where your feet are. While we're at work, we crush it. We produce big, needle-moving results. When we're not at work, we live well, enjoy ourselves, and reconnect with our personal values. So this one really sets the tone for the caliber of work that we bring to the table mm -hmm. because we don't want to – we do not want to have a business where we just get through each day. Right. Our goal is to be the best that we can mm -hmm. and to look at every day and how can we be better. Right. And that doesn't mean that we're not satisfied. Like we have to be satisfied with today, but we have to also want to get better. Right. And I think one of the things that we were at the conference that it like it hit me like a brick wall when I don't remember what the speaker was that said the skills you have today has already have already taken you as far as they're going to. And I was like, whoa. Yep. Like it, like it never occurred to me that that's that's so true. And so you have to just try better the next day and, you know, right. level up. Well, and one thing that we talked about at our company strategic planning meeting was, you know, where is our company going to be in two years? Right. And what skills do we need to personally get better at in order to be that company that we want to be in two years? Right. So again, it falls into that we want to be better than yesterday. Right. Foundation of faith. We are servant leaders using our talents to give back. We believe to whom much is given, much is expected. We believe in showing up for others with our hands, our hearts, and our finances. We serve a mission and purpose bigger than ourselves. So outside of, um, you know, faith is, is really the core of, of our company. Um, but alongside of that is that purpose. 
So we talk purpose a lot with our clients. We talk purpose a lot here at our company. And if you're just coming to work every day and you don't have a purpose that is driving you, uh, it's just work. Right. And there's nothing, you know, that's just not going to be satisfying enough. So when you can align what you do in your company with a bigger purpose, it makes it that much better. Yep. We choose joy every single day. We choose a positive outlook. We choose to ground ourselves in gratitude. Whether we are working virtually or in person as a team, we do this with amazing energy and positivity. Each of us is happily only a text, email, call, or Slack away when it comes to helping each other and our customers. I love this one, too. <laughs> we love them all. We They're all our favorites. All. Um, joy is really important. I want I want our employees to love what they do, but I don't only really love what they do, but have joy every day. Right. Because joy is very different than being happy. And so joy is... joy. You know, when you're having a bad day, you can still be joyful. Right. And I think the part about talking about gratitude is every day might not – I, I did not say this, someone else said this, but every day might not be good, but there's something good in every day. Right. It's like a if thread you can't, of joy. If you – it could be you hit all the green lights on your way to work. It doesn't right. have to be these big, huge – feelings of gratitude. It can be like little small things because sometimes the small victories and are are what gets you through the day on those tough days. We call those threads of joy. So look for a thread of joy every day in what you do. But those are our brand new core values and we're just getting used to them. And it's my job as the owner of our company to find ways to get our staff um to really believe in these core values. And um, so that's my challenge. My personal challenge to my team is um, now that we've written these great core values, how can we align what we do? How can we become this company? Right. And that's what's really important. And that's what we want to encourage the our child care centers and the people that are either watching or listening today. So we're going to end today with a challenge for you. Drum, so, roll, drum roll. Right. And so... Um, we challenge you with a couple questions. Do you have core values? And if so, like us, are they still valid today? May, you know, is it time for you to change? Right. Um, just because you have core values does not mean that they're valid today. And then are you still passionate about the foundation that your core values provide? And are they guiding you in the right direction? So we have to be, again, we have to be passionate about the foundation of your core values. And then finally, are your core values just on paper or does your team live them? Live, breathe, and believe. Gosh, I keep forgetting the believe because that is a huge part. So in the background, <laughs> you may hear our dog is like shaking off, but it's all good. This is what podcasting is about, right? Mr. Gunny will one day bring an appearance onto our set. Um, today he's trying to get in, but we will not let him. <laughs> <laughs> so again, our challenge is to you is to look at your core values. One, do you have them? Two, are you, you know, are they still valid today? Are you still passionate about them? And then is your team leave, living them, breathing them, and do they believe in them? Right. So I, we want you to consider, um, you know, asking yourself those questions. And, you know, we're going to be tuning in on a weekly basis with this podcast. Right. This is a weekly podcast. I failed to mention that in the beginning. And so um, take some time. Um, think about what we what we presented today in ter terms of our core values. We're glad you got to know who Justina and I are and why we do what we do. Right. And we're hoping that in our future daycare overhaul podcasts, you're going to continue to come watch, to listen, to refer us. And don't forget, if you have, you know, utilized any of these strategies or think any of the things we said, um, follow us on social. Basically, we're on it all. Right. So Facebook, we're Child Care Biz Help on Facebook and on Instagram, Child Care Biz Help. We're on LinkedIn, Child Care Biz Help. <laughs> So you see a theme, Child Care Biz Help. You see a theme. But we wanted to introduce our hashtag. And we're going to hashtag overhaul win. Hashtag overhaul win. So what we want you to do is if you have a win at your center, um, please 
consider posting on one of our social medias with that hashtag, um, hashtag overhaul win. Yeah. That would be wonderful. And what we would love is for you to share um, questions or stories with us in our email. Right. That will help us, you know, consider future topics, right? Yes. And so if you could email info, I-N-F-O at childcarebizhelp.com with your, you know, questions or stories, we'd love to have that too. Yes. And you'll be able to um, listen to our podcast wherever podcasts are available. Right. And one more thing. Tune in next week to hear um, our episode on mental health and balance. I'm excited. I'm really excited about that one. I think today was great. I do too. Oof, I'm so glad. I mean, we we're made probably it. a little bit biased because it's us, but <laughs> we did fantastic. Hopefully it wasn't too boring for you all. We made it through. We we really want to bring you value. We really want you to enjoy listening and watching us. And we promise we'll um, continue to evolve in our podcast daycare overhaul, uh, doing childcare better, but doing childcare better. <laughs> but thank you for listening. I'm Caroline Jens. I'm Christina Patterson. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.